Past Josh, what are you doing to me? Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Room 6. I'm Josh. If you're here, you know that. A little different today. Uh, I'm going to do a react video to something I found on the web. Uh, I searched a thing, I saw the first title, and immediately printed it without looking at the rest of it. So I have no idea how this is going to go. But I'm trying to do a reaction video that won't be copyright stricken and blocked by YouTube. So here we go. Um, this is... 25 really weird and curious tales about music history from uh, by Theodorus the second and uh, Yeah, it's from rollingstone.com Hope you like Debbie Harris was almost abducted by Ted Bundy. What apparently? This was a, uh, a trick to boost Blondie's album sales Debbie claimed she had accepted a lift in New York from a mysterious man who attempted to abduct her and whom she later realized was the infamous serial killer Ted Bundy. However, at the time, Bundy was living thousands of miles away in Utah, and according to his biography, had never visited New York. Hmm. Charles Manson auditioned to be a member of the Monkees. Oh, these were myths? All right, cool. Here I thought these were actually things that had happened, but apparently they're myths and rumors. Some of them might be true. So apparently a myth's been going around for decades that Charles Manson was among the young folks who auditioned to be a member of the Monkees. It's not an impossible scenario, but since 437 people tried out, and he was writing music at the time, including a song that was later released by the Beach Boy? Be what? There's, there's one little technical problem. In 1965, at the time of the auditions, Manson was in prison. Oops. Hope you don't mind, I'm gonna kind of walk a little bit here. El- <laughs> Here- Okay. There's a rumor or a myth that Elvis, Tupac, Bob Marley, and Jim Morrison are still alive. They're not. And they all live happily together on a beautiful island that no one can find on a map simply because this island exists only in the wild imagination of some diehard romantic fans. Yeah, no freaking crap. Look, they're dead. They're dead. As much as we would love to have them back, especially with the current state of a lot of music, they're dead. Be inspired. Move on. Oh, crimey. Lady Gaga is her hermaphrodite. I'm not dignifying that. Nope, nope. Apparently, the song My Way, you know, Sinatra made it famous, Kill the song My Way in the Philippines um, created a lot of fatal arguments. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of killings around My Way karaoke. Guys, it's just karaoke. Um, <laughs> at least 12 people died between 2002 and 2012 while singing the song. What? What? Even though opinions differ over whether the connection is sheer coincidence, since the song is frequently sung in the nation's karaoke bars, where violence is common, or to the aggressive lyrics... Aggressive lyrics? The fact is, the song has become the most deadly in music history over the past decade in the Philippines. Wow. Old Frank, old blue eyes, still making them feel stuff. Uh, maybe you guys have heard of this. Apparently there's a new artist Grammy curse. Uh, whoever's won the award as Best New Artist, their careers go down in flames, apparently. Um, it might be true for artists such as Millie Vanilli, Men at Work, Amy Winehouse, and Jody Watley. Makes you wonder how accurate the belief is when you find out that other winners include Mariah Carey, Sheryl Crow, Christina Aguilera, Adele, and last but not least, the biggest selling music act of all time, The Beatles. Alright, now we've all heard this one. Ozzy Osbourne bit, ba bit bats and drank their blood. It's not what happened. It was a pigeon. I've seen the interview. Um, there are doses of truth in this popular rock myth. When you hear the whole story about the specific incident, you realize you've been misguided. On a 1982 tour, Ozzy was in the habit of hurling calves, livers, and pigs' intestines into the audience. Because that's what I want when I go to a rock show. The crowds began to fight back <laughs> at a show in Iowa. Ah, Cornland. A fan threw a live bat onto the stage, thinking it was a rubber toy. Ozzy bit the head off it, and as a result was rushed to the hospital for rabies injections. The truth is, Ozzy never bit any bat or drank its blood intentionally, as many fans still believe. So I was wrong. It wasn't a pigeon. I thought I'd heard that. Oh well. What else do we have? Courtney Love murdered Kurt. Oh, no. No, I'm not dignifying that. I'm not. This is May at the time of recording. May is Mental Health Month. If you're feeling... If you're having intrusive thoughts or you're feeling like it's just not worth it anymore, please talk to somebody. Please get help. 
it is worth it. That's that's fucked up. Frank Zappa used to eat poop live on state. What the? F Past Josh, what are you doing to me? There were rumors that the legendary musician was once challenged on stage to a gross-out contest, and Zappa triumphed by taking a poop on stage and then eating it. I, I've done some dumb stuff on stage, but that's... Wow. Uh, Zappa, however, explained what really happened that night by stating, For the record, folks, I never took a on stage, and the closest I ever came to eating shit anywhere was at a Holiday Inn buffet. SHADE! Alright, from the weird and the morbid and the downright offensive to just, huh? Jay-Z is a time-traveling vampire. <laughs> Apparently, there's a photograph released in 2013 by the Schromber Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture at the New York Public Library. There's someone who looks a lot like the rapper and husband of Beyonce. The picture was taken in 1939. And uh, there, people are calling him a vampire, an immortal, or maybe just a time traveler. <sighs> people, read a book. Use Google. It's a statistical fact. There are, on average, six people in the world somewhere that look a hell of a lot like you. Time traveling vampire, Jesus. Apparently, in 2012, Pitbull, you know, Mr. Worldwide, he released a, a track titled Get It Started that also features Shakira. My hips don't lie. The lyric includes the lines, But for now it's off to Malaysia, two passports, three cities, two countries, one day. For some reason, people think that this is him predicting the disappearance of flight MH370. Um, you can find, you can find conspiracies in everything if you, you look hard enough. But here's what I really want to be true. The Beatles got high at Buckingham Palace. Wow. Apparently in the 60s, this was a myth that the Beatles smoked a joint together in Buckingham Palace before accepting their MBEs. Uh... Look up what MBE is, I don't remember off the top of my head. However, the truth appears to be a little bit different. It was Lennon who came up with this story, but the band later confessed it wasn't true, as they'd have been far too scared and shy to do such a thing. I mean, no nowadays, of course, in our current climate, where pot is legal, almost everywhere, everywhere with half a brain cell, it's kind of not a big deal, but I can see why it's kind of a big deal. Get high right before meeting the queen. Ooh, here's one that I been on the right side of and then the wrong side of and I'm glad to find out that I was actually right before I was told I was wrong. Jack White and Meg White are siblings, better known as the White Stripes. They lied about their relationship because they didn't think critics or fans would take them seriously if they knew the truth and the truth is they're not a brother or sister band, they are married. The marriage was many albums ago and didn't last long so they're not married anymore. Aww. But they seem so happy. Keith Richards, blood replacement? No. Michael Jackson owned the elephant man's remains? We know that. The real Eminem is dead. Okay. And so is Paul McCartney. Guys, it's Sir Paul McCartney. Any fan of the blues probably has heard about Robert Johnson's deal with the devil. Apparently he met the devil at a crossroads on the outskirts of some unknown town. And it's one of those famous stories in blues history. Um... <laughs> Some think that his song, Crossroads, about that meaning is cursed, as many artists who have covered it, such as Leonard Skinner and the Aldman Brothers, have had tragedy befall them. I mean, I've never covered it. I'm still here. But... Yeah. Okay. Roy Orbison was blind. <sighs> he wasn't blind. He just wore the shades as a gimmick. In fact, it says right here. The dark, oversized shades quickly became Roy Orbison's gimmick, leading to the widespread and completely false rumor that he was blind. He actually was supposed to play, like, uh, he was on a tour with the Beatles to support them. And he'd forgotten to, or he had to wear sunglasses on stage for some reason, because he, uh, oh, he forgot his perfectly regular glasses. And that's how it started. Led Zeppelin's contract with the devil. I mean, maybe? No. Gene Simmons' unusually long tongue. I try to run a classy show here, except when, you know, I do interviews or, you know, Whiskey reviews with Sean, you know. This one's for you, future Josh. I'm just moving around from camera to camera, making it more uncomfortable for you than it is for me. But, uh, come on. He just has a long tongue for a human. That's it. Which, great for his wife, I guess? Keep it classy! Wait for the truck! Okay. Three, two, one. Fleetwood Mac's guitarist curse. 
Ooh. I should be doing this in Halloween. So apparently, <clears throat> if you're a guitarist with Fleetwood Mac, things are going to go bad for you. Um, following Peter Green's departure, Jeremy Spencer went AWOL in 1971. He was eventually found among the Children of God cult. Holy crap. Another guitarist, Danny Kerwin, was fired in 72 after a drink-fueled episode that saw him bashing his head against a bathroom wall and smashing up his guitar. We've all been there, Danny. And then the curse struck again. Mick Fleetwood's wife, Jenny Boyd, had an affair with guitarist Bob Weston. He was also fired. In 73, Mick and Jenny would divorce, remarry, and divorce again. Yes, as we all know, Fleetwood Mac, the soap opera of bands. You've probably heard about the supposed cursed 27 Club. That's where a famous artist hits 27 and then dies. Such as Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Brian Jones, I didn't know that, and Kurt Cobain, whose death became the reason the 27 Club began to gain wide notoriety. Guys, I hope you liked that. It was a little different for me. Um, if you have any suggestions for me to do reactions to, I'd love to do them. It's great not reading a script, but it's also great to just discover things I didn't know and to be honestly shocked and amazed or, you know, find them hilarious. So please, please, please hit me up in the comments or email me or many of my other social media things. There is a link down there for all the social media stuff. There's also a link if you want to get in touch with me regarding reviewing any of your music or your live show or doing an interview or whatever. There's also a link for my merch, room6.shop. Uh, aside from the Room 6 designs, I've got some new designs, some really hilarious ones, and also some really awesome ones that I'm very proud of. I designed them all myself. Uh, any money for that goes to making better videos and also helping the local Las Vegas music scene. So please consider stopping by, get yourself some, you know, nice threads. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it really does make a difference. Please click down here. I'm trying to hit 1,000 by the end of 2021. Um, I need your help. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Time-traveling vampire.